Hi, Tyler at Interfidelity here. Today we're going to talk about quite an interesting product. This is the BSG Technologies Reveal uh, headphone amplifier and um, signal completion stage. They don't really call this product the signal completion stage, but they have a much more expensive product called the Cole. It's Q0L signal completion stage. It's about a $2,500 product, <clears throat> but this is quite similar to that product in the way it operates. Uh, what it intends to do is make the audio sound wider and richer and more involving, and it sort of does that. Uh, this is actually one of a class of audio products that are used in the professional world uh, primarily in audio mixing and mastering. Uh, this uh, technology uses some and different signals in audio in order to change the apparent width of the stereo signal. I'll go into that a little bit more and, and if you really want to know about it you have to read the article that's linked underneath the video here on the YouTube channel because it's a little complicated but uh, basically, we're used to thinking of audio as left and right channels, but there's another way we can think about audio in terms of the mono component of the signal, the, the signal that's the same on both channels, the mid signal, and the difference component of the audio signal, that which is different between the left and the right channel. This sort of started uh, with a microphone technique called the mid-side microphone technique. And with this technique, you had two microphones, a omnidirectional microphone, and then a figure eight microphone on top of it, or right next to it. Now, a figure eight microphone is a diaphragm with its edge uh, aligned forward with the center of the image and it picks up at a pattern in a figure eight to either side. So a microphone that has a diaphragm that's perpendicular like this will pick up sound from the right or pick up sound from the left, but it doesn't pick up sound if it's coming directly at it. So sound coming from the left hand side when it hits it, a positive going sound pressure wave hitting it on the left side uh, will produce a positive going electrical signal. But a positive going signal on the right side of a microphone like this produces a negative going electrical signal. Now, then you need a little special mixer that takes the mono component, puts it on both the left and right channels. So it takes the omnidirectional microphone, the mid microphone, and puts it on both channels equally. So when you listen to it, it sounds like it's coming from in between the two speakers. <clears throat> But you take the figure eight microphone and you mix it in phase to the left channel. And then you reverse the phase or reverse the polarity, to be more technically correct. You reverse the polarity and feed it to the right channel. And then that figure eight mic gets mixed in positive with the mono signal that's on the left channel and inverted with the mono signal that's on the right channel. And what it does is reconstruct what amounts to two microphones, the one that's facing left and one that's facing right. So the point about this type of microphone technique is that it's possible to have a stereo audio signal in a signal that is composed of the mid and the side signal and then you mix them in phase for left and out of phase for right. So this is a very strange sort of thing. <clears throat> now the, the odd thing is, is that you can do the same thing with a standard audio signal. So you take the left and the right channel and you sum them together for the mono channel and then you take the left channel minus the right channel for one different signal and the right channel minus the left channel for the other different signal. And then you can sum them back onto the left and right channel respectively with a component of the mono signal and reconstruct the stereo signal. 
Now the importance of this is that when the, these signals are in the mid and side domain, you can adjust the apparent width of the stereo image that you'll be listening to by adjusting the level of the mid channel. So if you take the mid channel and reduce its ratio relative to the side channels, you'll get a wider stereo image. And if you take the mid channel and make it stronger, you'll get a narrower image. So unlike a left and a right audio signal, which you really can't do much with, with a mid side signal or a sum and difference signal, you can adjust how wide the stereo image is. Now, uh, in addition to that, you can make multiple copies of these different signals and you can put them through, for example, a filter so that you just have the base of the side signal or just have the treble of the side signal. And then you can delay these signals slightly and then remix them back in. Now, recording professionals have equipment that does this type of thing. And the purpose of this equipment is to make the stereo image richer. Uh, another thing that this technology can do is it can take a mono image, an, an, a, uh, an old, very old jazz recording, for example, that's, that's on, in mono, which means the left and the right are exactly the same. And the image comes from directly in between the speakers, and it's rather small. And you can run it through these types of devices, and you can widen the mono image. So you can make the mono image seem a little bit wider using some of these filtering techniques. Well, the Reveal is one such device. This device, uh, the patent goes into quite a bit of detail on this device. And the proprietary part of this device is that they are using the golden ratio in terms of the proportions of these mid-side signals in various ways. Now my, uh, and let's last say that this is a $119 product, so it's quite an expensive product. Uh, and basically what you do is you take the output from a player device and put it in one side of it, and then you plug your headphones into the other side of it, turn it on, and then turn the bypass switch off, and you have this effect. So that's what it's there for. Uh, my experience, listening experience with the device was that it, it's not subtle. It does something very definitely to the, the sound of the music, and it does make it wider and richer sounding. But because there's only one ratio being used in this, uh, it appears to me that depending on the, the nature of the music signal that you're listening to, whether there's a lot of difference information or whether it may be mono, the effect that this thing has changes depending on the ratios of those types of parts of the audio signal. And so I found that on some music it worked great, like uh, large orchestral works done with a, a, a small number of microphones, which tend to be a little congested and, and not have a, a, a very wide image on headphones. When you turn this on, it widens the image nicely and it brings out a lot of the ambience in the room. A lot of ambient information, room reverberation and air conditioner noise and things like that is, uh, is not the same on both, channel, it, both channels. And therefore, because this ambient information is constructed largely of a different signal that's different than the left and right channel, that it gets magnified uh, greatly. Anyway, uh, with these uh, large orchestral recordings or choral recordings, they did a great job of richening up the sound and, and making the image a little bit wider. It also apparently had it come forward a little bit towards you, which might have been a bit of an illusion because it's a little bit louder when you turn this switch on. There's about a 3 dB difference when you, when you turn the product on. But, uh, um, but you also hear more reverberation so it tends to put a layer of reverberant information behind the artists, which I think also cause it to seem to shift forward a little bit. On the other hand, uh, with uh, music close mic recorded in a studio, 
that already has fairly good width, the reveal for me made the image too wide sometimes. So I was hearing the, the, the bass or the, the guitar or whatever in one ear only, and it, it just seemed overly wide and exaggerated in terms of its effect. Uh, so it would be nice, as far as I'm concerned, if there was some adjustment on this product where you could adjust how much of these various components get rematrixed back into the audio signal. The one thing I did find, though, that it worked pretty consistently well on uh, was uh, old recordings that were either in mono, because it made them seem wider than they were and richer, or were stereo but hard panned left and right. For example, old Beatles albums where there's a singer in one ear and a singer in the other ear. You know, John's in one side and Paul's on the other side and the drums are in the middle and it's very stark in between these instruments. So-called ping pong stereo. Because this device tends to broaden each source within the image, it did seem to fill in some of the spaces. Normally there'd be blob on the left, blob on the right, and a blob in the middle with nothing in between. And with this, there it seemed to fill in that space a little better. And while I don't really recommend it uh, wholeheartedly for music listening, as it's sort of hit and miss, I, I definitely recommend it for movie watching. Uh, it does come with a little bit of a Velcro strip, and so what I've done is on my iPad, which is in my OtterBox case, attach it to the iPad, take the audio output of the iPad and kind of wrap it around it, and then plug my headphones in, and I'm ready to do a little movie watching. And I'm pretty sure that's going to stay there because I really like it for that application. All right, the BSG Technologies Reveal headphone signal uh, widget. <laughs> I don't know what they call it exactly. It's $119 and it's a lot of fun. I hope you get a chance to listen to one soon, especially if you get a chance to tack one to the back of your iPad for some movie watching. All right. We'll see you next time.